House Republicans vote 231 to 187, holding former IRS official Lois Lerner in contempt of Congress. Every Republican in the House voted in favor of the move, and all but a few Democrats voted against it. Lerner being held in contempt for refusing to answer questions surrounding the agency's targeting of conservative groups. Now, Republicans are determined to figure out why the IRS started focusing on groups for political activity. Democrats are calling the move a partisan witch hunt, pure and simple. And the Dens are saying the same thing when it comes to Benghazi. House Republicans set to begin another investigation into the attack. GOP also forming a special task force investigating the incident. Democrats are threatening a boycott. And the House Speaker John Boehner, he is standing behind the probe. This is all about getting to the truth. There's not going to be a sideshow. There's not going to be a circus. Uh, this is a serious investigation. Listen, our system of government... All right. I, I, I've heard... Uh, I, I would love to attribute who did the line, but anytime somebody says it's not going to be a circus or a sideshow, it's going to be. Do you think that Congress would be having these hearings if one Hillary Clinton wasn't the presumptive nominee in 2016? Absolutely. This is, you know, you said we've gotten all the answers. We never have gotten all the answers. And, you know, I have to tell you, I think the Democrats have gotten away with a lot. I really do. Mr. Whitman. You know, no, no, I'm just, uh, I was uh, somewhat... Uh, in awe of the ramp up there. I mean, it does seem like the scandal card is the biggest card that Republicans are trying to play now that uh, health care enrollment in 2014 seems to have met expectations and, and uh, unemployment numbers are at a reasonable level. It seems like this is the next uh, campaign type. Well, do you think Benghazi is a witch hunt? Well, there have already been, what, 11 investigations into it, several committed, done by Congress. Daryl Issa has been going nonstop at this for the last two years. No cooperation and from the But there hasn't, been, but there hasn't been any indication that there was any sort of sinister plot coming from the White House. Not if you, if you don't have the information. How could you possibly... We're finding stuff out from Judicial Watch as opposed from the administration. Yeah. I mean, that's what led to the last email train that, that, that led us on. that were given for a Sunday morning talk show? That's unheard of. Oh, wait, sorry, that happens every Sunday. No, no. Oh, talking really? Talking points to distort the truth. Right. Talking uh, points about... Talking points to distort the truth, as the congressman just said. Look, this is, if you've done nothing wrong, then welcome the investigation. There's no problems. Look, quite frankly, the American people at a very low level care about Benghazi. So for a political witch hunt, there'd better be something there if the Republicans hope to catch fire in this whole thing. The point is, if there's nothing to hide, Go hand over the documents. This administration, as, if as the report, the standard, as the report, a few no, no, governors let, would have some interesting look, answers. Look, to but, 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 Fox News is now launching a campaign that anytime the president speaks, if the if the reporters don't ask him about Benghazi, they won't cover the press conference. Okay, so tell me that this is. That, tell what me, does that have to? That's I Fox think it speaks, News. I think that, it speaks there. somewhat to the partisan nature of the investigation Every, of Benghazi. Everything and in Washington the IRS, is partisan. It's already been established that the IRS investigated conservative groups and progressive groups and other political groups that didn't have that sort of pro-marijuana legalization groups, they investigated super PACs and other political organizations. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no there there in the IRS, despite this woman uh, wait, wait, sticking wait, wait, by wait. her Fifth Amendment rights. Yeah, no, okay. There's no, no there there in going after conservative groups. If they also went after liberal or, well, or progressive fine. groups, Th then and answer they also, the question. Right. I went after this conservative groups because of this. I went after these liberal groups. They went, after them, they went after them for the same reason, which is to, to find out the source of their money and to, and to make sure that their accounting was okay and that they weren't violating the rules in this relatively so new they, world they of packs and superpacks. They did. They as did. A of fact. It, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't. It wasn't singled out strictly for conservative groups. That was the headline. But then they went into it. Now you can argue well, why are they targeting these groups at all? That might be a legitimate question. But it wasn't a partisan it, it, witch hunt it, for one off, group. It, progressive groups were also targeted well, as well. It, so don't take the fifth. Right. <laughs> right. Why would you take the fifth? If, if, you, if you're going after everybody, you, I can't believe look, you two guys who know government are, are Richard, saying what I can't, better than what I, I do. What I, can't, exactly what I can't believe is somebody like you who talks about transparency and openness of government. The people covering covering this White House have rated them to be the least transparent of any recent administration. I don't think that's an, I don't so, think that's so an unfair so, point. So, the, so, so there is an inherent mistrust by Republicans of anything in this administration. Because well, when it comes to Obamacare, they will go and say, magically, magically, at the last minute, we've now hit our 7 million wait number. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait no, a minute. Wait, no, 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 no. no. Look, Tom, look, give me a chance to wait, speak wait, for a second. Yesterday on Capitol Hill, yeah. what happened? 
we had six insurance ex ex executives yeah. who were requested to appear by the Republican committee. Mm -hmm. They said, come here, and it was intended to be, tell us how bad things are. Now, these are people who are on record as critical of Obamacare at its inception. And, and they, they said, you know what? And what they say? It's now, great. We, it's we great. We not only made our numbers. It's great. More than 80% of them are paying their premiums. It's actually working, and it's not a government-run program <laughs> that the government's so, taking so. over health care. The Republicans got mad because they didn't get the answer and, they and wanted. These, and, 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 and these, these the same insurance executives who've been privately threatened by this administration? See, oh, please. No, no, this is ridiculous. See, this is the point we're at. It doesn't matter what the answers are. You're not going to like the answers. You just want to keep asking the questions. I'm not going to like them because I don't like the history of this administration. Uh, I don't. You know what? The bottom line is, so the Republicans called in these insurance executives, and the insurance executives didn't take the fifth. They answered the questions. <laughs> but my other point is, you still have people, even when they answer the questions, that they believe that there's some conspiracy going on here, or no. they can't take yes for an answer. See, I never made the seven million or whatever, eight million, whatever it was, an issue, because frankly, we got 365, 315 million people in this country. I'm not impressed with seven or eight. Right. Well, <laughs> I'm not either. They made up the number. I'm just saying it's because the number was irrelevant. It was the ratio that was most important. So, so, I, if you didn't have enough young people sign up, the program was going to fall apart. As for the subjection for people taking the Fifth Amendment, tell that to the two Chris Christie aides who took the Fifth Amendment before the legislative you, you, committee. You, you, you no, know, Andrew, 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 quite frankly, that's why you're the senior liberal correspondent on this show. <laughs> Quite frankly, that's why I can't well, take why, it seriously. Why is it okay? You should be a Democratic why, National why, Committee spokesperson. Why is it okay? I, listen, Tom, 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 I, I, I think the question. The, the, why the, do the, you have the, nothing the, to hide? The legitimate, the legitimate answer is if you're comparing Lois Lerner at the I, heading up the IRS and two campaign staff, one campaign staffer and, and an administrative level person there at age 32 trying to protect their lives, then, then we have a real issue here. I have no problem with it, her taking the fifth. She has every right to do it. But don't stand here and tell me that she was doing it across the board. Because she wasn't doing it across not, the board. It's not her saying it. Every investigation turned up and all the So then why would she out. take the fifth? But because right now, admit it for a second, I just, we just heard yesterday from insurance executives who came forward and testified under oath about the program. So it's great. What did they hear? Everything's you, great. We heard a lawmaker, a Republican lawmaker who ran and says, they didn't come here and they haven't been truthful. So they turn, they throw their hands up and say, uh, again, what's the point? You won't take yes or no for the answer when they do testify, even under oath. Look, now all of a sudden you're saying, oh, this was all an inside I, job. Richard, so why does that apply to Ben Why does that imply Richard, I have been one of the few people on my side of the aisle who's called it straight when it's been straight. This president is in over his head. That's why he has a 41% approval rating right now. He's in over his head. Okay, so a, when he I says a, something, okay. I don't tend to I, believe I him. I have a question, though. Is part of the problem, just a little bit, will you grant me, that this president, from the minute he walked in, his legitimacy as a U.S. citizen was taken into account here? Uh, no. This no, president no. has, unlike no, any time at least no. I can remember. He's been reelected. He was reelected again. But what was it's the, on him. So you, so you want to go out there and now you want to play the game of we got 5% of the lunatics in this country who thinks that he was born in Kenya when the rest of America's like, hey, he's our president. He's an American. I sat here on election night with Congressman Chase. He's my president. He's not a very good president. That's the end of the story. I, don't well, let the 5% I, well, ruin the rest of the dance. He's not good. I don't know what makes the end of it. I have, I've well, had my share of disappointments as well. But what to are suggest, they? What, what are I they? think he could have been a lot more forceful. I didn't like... Um, and I may take issue with some others. I don't like how Syria was handled. That's just the, the rattle yeah, off the, mo the know, recent ones. But it, it's not a point whether he's a good president or a bad okay, president. So I just think there are people, and it's a growing number in this country, who no matter what he says or his administration will say, will look for some nefarious conspiracy. So what's Richard, the incentive Richard, to do the transparency if they're not going to believe it if they hear it under oath? You see, my problem is if, if, if a Republican president during an election had said to Putin via, I guess, the president, uh, after the election, I'll be able to deal with these issues differently. That would have been an outrage. This president basically sent a message to a Russian president that after I'm elected, I'm going to be a little more lenient. Right. We, we're in the mess we're in right now, in my judgment, in Ukraine, because Putin basically believed that this president would be weak, and he has been weak. 
Absolutely. I, we can. Bravo. Uh, there's part of me, and I know Andrew and I don't agree necessarily on this. That's I, shocking. I see, no, but I do see, and I find there's some legitimacy that people read weakness. I also think it's a little simple to say that if we, if he just acted tougher here, we wouldn't have had a problem. No, um, I, no I, but he gave, he gave a message to the president that I'm going to talk one way in the election, but after the election, I'm going to be different. Okay. I have an issue that I. I would hope isn't partisan, although everything's partisan lately, and that has to do with climate change. And I'm going to try and approach this not from a right or from a left, but if you got kids, you got grandkids, and you might be having some soon here, how much will this issue affect not only our present, but also our future? And what can we expect out of our leaders and also out of we, the people here, for real sacrifice, what are we willing to do here? We're going to get into that, both policy and politics, on I think one of the biggest issues facing not only our country, but our globe here in the not-too-distant future. Stay with us.